The Sheikh of Dubai ordered the construction of an island in the Arabian Sea up to five kilometers long, where each villa will have its own private beach. It was a delightful dream seen by the Sheikh of Dubai to create a luxury island, facing the dangerous waves of the sea. But at the same time, it was a substantial challenge for the engineers and workers. Once again, welcome to Simply Factual. In the previous part of the video, you saw how Dubai's coastline, which only spread across 70 kilometers, was designed to be extended to 124 kilometers. A palm-shaped island was planned for this expansion. This palm-shaped island aimed to protect the coastline from the waves of the sea. In order to protect this palm-shaped island from the powerful waves of the sea, the engineers arranged 9.9 .9 million tons of stones. But from where? The answer lies in part one of the video. These stones, once placed in the sea, were used to construct the outer island. If any of them were not positioned correctly, the island could become vulnerable at any time. To check this, divers went down to 30 meters underwater. Divers descended below and signaled the team above with a go-ahead sign after checking the position of each stone. Let's continue the video and learn about some other challenges faced by the engineers. Challenge number five. The construction of Palm Jumeirah had started six months ago. The engineering team had already built a four kilometer long breakwater, but there were still seven kilometers left to construct. Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum of Dubai had given the engineering team a deadline of just two and a half years to create this island. Only 21 months were left, in which they had to complete the breakwater and simultaneously face the challenge of building the Palm Jumeirah Island inside it. The challenge for the engineers was that if they started building the island inside after completing the breakwater, they might not meet the Sheikh's deadline. Alternatively, if they started inside first, the waves of the sea might engulf the island. So now, the engineers had to find the right balance. Trapped in such a net where they had to change their planning to get out, engineers decided that the construction of both parts of the Iceland would proceed simultaneously. As the breakwater progressed, the inner part of Palm Island would also have to be built together. This decision was made as winter approached and a new problem arose. Every year during winters, the Arabian Gulf is targeted by strong winds known as the Shamal Storms. Due to these strong winds, the sea becomes quite dangerous, making travel very difficult. It was crucial for the sea to calm down for the construction of the island. Due to the storm, construction was delayed for two months, but during these two months, the construction team didn't waste time. Instead, they began searching for solutions to this very difficult task. Challenge number six. The Palm Island required 94 million cubic meters of sand. Considering the weight, to build this palm tree-shaped island, 15 million tons heavy sand was required, which was truly a staggering task. The challenge wasn't just how to transport such a large amount of sand to the island site, but rather, where to find this much amount of sand. If you're assuming that this sand would be taken from Dubai's deserts, then your estimation is completely wrong. Indeed, there is plenty of sand in Dubai's deserts with no limit to its quantity. However, this sand is very fine, and if it is used in water, it will mix with it. Hence, the engineers needed a type of sand that wouldn't mix with water, ensuring that the island remains stable and doesn't dissolve into the sea. After research, it was discovered that the required sand would be found on the ocean floor. A point was located 10 kilometers away from the construction site in the sea, where there was an abundance of such sand on the ocean floor, capable of fulfilling the requirements for building this island. Dredgers were used to extract this sand from the ocean floor. It filled the tanks with the sand by sucking it out with a rate of 8,000 tons per hour. The sand was collected by dredger and then sprayed onto the construction site. This entire process is called rainbowing. It took four hours for a dredger to shift the sand to the construction site, and 8,000 tons of sand was transported in one go. If this dredger works continuously for 12 hours in daytime, it would take two years to bring the required 15 million tons of sand. But the engineers didn't have that much time. Hence, 
it was decided that multiple dredgers would work simultaneously to fulfill the shake's deadline. Challenge number seven, constructing the palm tree island with rainbowing wasn't easy. In this entire project, only one line was straight. All other lines were curved, and this complicated shape of the tree was making it quite difficult for the engineers to form a perfect shape. The dredger was spraying sand into the sea, and gradually, a part of the island was emerging above the sea. But the question remained whether the shape they were trying to create was actually forming or not. If the sand was sprayed in the wrong position, not only would the island's shape be ruined, but also money and time would be wasted. Hence, it was decided that a satellite orbiting 650 kilometers above the ground would be used to take photos of the Palm Jumeirah site. It was confirmed that whatever construction had been completed so far in the island was according to the plan. Sheikh was happy to know this, but as the treasure sand was being sprayed, the difficulties were increasing. There was no outline of the tree shape in the sea, nor could any outline be made there. Keeping the palm tree shape maintained was becoming quite difficult. Now the engineers had to do something so that the pinpoint accuracy of the sand could be determined, and it could spray only to that point. To accomplish this task, the use of GPS technology was made by workers who had GPS units in their hands. They walked on the border of island and their position data was received in real time. This data of GPS coordinates was sent and the sand only sprayed at the point where the worker had walked manually. This solution was working perfectly and now the sand was filling the island's border with pinpoint accuracy. Challenge number eight. More than a year had passed since the construction of Palm Jumeirah Island started, and the engineers were able to make eight kilometers long breakwater. On the other side, the team of Palm Island was solely dedicated to this task day and night. Out of 16 branches of Palm Island, nine had been completed, and a challenge arose in front of the engineering team that they hadn't anticipated. The breakwater, which was actually being built to stop the powerful waves of the sea, had started showing its effectiveness. It had begun to stop the waves efficiently, but now the flow of water inside the island had reduced. This meant that the water on the inner side of the island was standing at one place, causing it to become stagnant and smelly. This was a huge problem, and if a solution wasn't found immediately, there was a high chance that Sheik's project would fail miserably. To tackle this issue, changes were necessary in the design of the island. Something had to be done so that water kept flowing on the inner side of the island, preventing it from becoming stagnant. Fortunately, the engineers found a good solution for this. It was decided to break the breakwater from two sides and bridges would be built there. This way, water pressure could go inside from one side and come out from the other. Finally, this solution worked and after a few weeks, the island got rid of stagnant, smelly water, slowly flowing out. Challenge number nine. In August 2003, the breakwater of Jumeirah had been completed, made of 9.9 .9 million tons of stones. It was 250 meters wide. This breakwater effectively stopped the waves of the sea. Just a month later, the Palm Island team sent a good news. The 16 roots of the palm tree, built from 15 million tons of sand, had also been completed. The dredgers had been working continuously for a year, and now it was time for them to finally stop. The engineering team had completed the entire island on time and under budget. Now it was time to build luxurious shopping malls and hotels on it. But there were issues that were troubling the engineering team in every way. Another challenge arose, posing a danger to the entire island. The sand used to build the palm shape with considerable effort was becoming compact, and many parts of the island were starting to sink back in water. According to the Sheikh's dreams, there were to be metal roads and thousands of buildings on this island. But for that to happen, it was necessary that the island's sand should be completely solid. This issue was a headache for the entire engineering team, and because of this, all work had once again come to a halt. It was crucial to find a solution to this problem quickly, 
because this was the point where the eyes of the whole world were fixed on this project. And because of this island, the Sheikh's reputation was at stake. Besides this issue, there was another one. Dubai, by the nature of its geography, was already vulnerable to being near earthquake zone. If any disaster struck here, the consequences could be disastrous. Palm Island's sand, which was not yet compact, could have led to the entire island disappearing with just a slight jolt. The only solution to this problem was to compact the sand of the island to a depth of 12 meters, while a normal road roller could only compact the sand to a depth of 6 meters. To deal with this issue, engineers brought a new method to the field. They brought in a hydraulic drill that went into the ground and created vibrations, compacting the sand with these vibrations. Wherever the drill made a bore, that part became fully solid. This experiment was entirely successful. So now, by drilling more than 250,000 holes and spreading them up to five kilometers, the entire Palm Island was made solid. It could have taken seven years to build the island, but with the help of 40,000 workers, it was completed in just three years, setting a new world record. After constructing all the buildings in January 2009, Palm Jumeirah was opened to the public for the first time. Thank you for tuning into this informative video. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to Simply Factual for more interesting content, and ring the notification bell to stay updated.